Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Movie Crusaders. My name is Sean Waskrug. With me, as always, is my Weekend Crusader co-host, Brian Michaels. We are doing a spoiler review, I guess, slash discussion of The Suicide Squad. If you guys have not seen it yet, what the fuck are you doing? I think everyone, everyone's seen The Suicide Squad. Uh, it's on HBO Max. It's in the theaters. I saw it twice back-to-back on HBO Max because it cost me, like, nothing. Uh, Brian, you saw it in theaters once, and then you saw it on HBO Max, right? Correct. Correct. So you got to actually see it the theater experience. I did, um, and I actually very much enjoyed that because I saw it in IMAX, and as far as I can tell, the entire movie was shot for IMAX aspect ratio, too. I because, wish you could have watched it in IMAX, but I don't have an IMAX in here. Yeah, no, so I watched the way, and, I, and I, I, I'm not sure of the entire movie, but if not, it was giant chunks, because whenever I thought of it, I was like, hey, this is taking up the full IMAX screen. So I, I don't know if it was a whole movie, but whenever I noticed it, it definitely was. So that was kind of cool. If, if I had an IMAX near me, I would have probably been more gung-ho to go see it in theaters. But because all I have are crappy screens that makes me not be able to see the Green Knight the way it was supposed to be seen. And kind of was like, well, I'm not going to pay money to see Suicide Squad when I watch a freaking 4K TV show me Suicide Squad. Nonetheless... If you guys want to see a non-spoiler review, I have that posted on the channel. If you guys want a written review, you can see the written review on the Movie Crusaders uh, Facebook page. Uh, But this is your spoiler warning. Everything is in play. We are going to talk about everything in this film. So if you're like, how dare you? This is your fucking warning. And this, this review is also rated R, just like the film. So if you guys have a problem with cuss words or anything like that, I don't give a shit. And I don't think Brian does either. But anyway, we're talking about The Suicide Squad. And I think with this film, and I said this in my review, and I think, Brian, you agree, the anticipation for this movie prior to the announcement of the director, I don't think any of us really wanted to see this film because of how shitty the first one was. And then once the whole Disney thing happened and James Gunn was basically given free reign to do this, the anticipation level I think jumped up to pretty much a ten. Are, would would you agree with that? Yeah, because well, I think I don't think there ever was a sequel plan until James Gunn was attached. But I agree that I, th- I think that it was like after the first one, nobody was clamoring for another movie. No. But then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, guess what? There is going to be a new one, and James Gunn's going to direct it." We're like, "You got me. I'm sold. I'm there." I think I, I think for me personally, when it came to James Gunn's going to direct Suicide Squad, I was like, "Yeah, but the Suicide Squad wasn't." wasn't good like i don't really care and then like well here's a sneak peek behind the scenes when they did what that that's what right. completely sold me oh yeah, yeah. what wasn't that was it not was it comic-con but they, they got uh, i want to say it was that uh it was that uh dc thing they did oh it was like a dc event because they dropped that and like it wasn't a trailer but it was pretty much like what was like a three minute video of like pretty much the opening scene and all the actors basically going this is so much fun and we're having a black, and I, I think from that little mini trailer was just like, okay, it, it's time to get serious about this film. Yeah, because I first heard about it and you heard James Gunn do it. I'm like, you know what? And of course, the first thing you think of is, is Guardians of the Galaxy because yeah. it's an ensemble film, it's a comic book film, but it's got a lot of humor in it. Um, and it's got kind of, and James Gunn is great at kind of balancing that humor without, you know, overdoing it. Um, so, like, I already felt decent about it but it was still kind of in the place of do we really need another suicide squad uh they started adding all the cast members i'm like you know what this is interesting to see some of these people in it and then like you said when once we saw that I, I sizzle reel whatever you want to call it behind the scenes whatever um that was the greatest i watched that thing like five times that day alone so i'm like this is going to be a ton of fun i watched it quite a few times and then it got to the point where they released the first red band and i watched it and i was like oh my god i should not have watched this like I feel like I've already seen too much, and it wasn't, and it wasn't that we did, because for, for the most part, everything that we see in that trailer, for the most part, is the first like twenty minutes of the film. There's some little snippets of the end, but it was mostly twenty. But it was one of those things where it's like, oh, I feel like I've seen too much. I can't watch anything else. And well, I think that, but but I'm, I I don't remember what specifically what this show showed and didn't show in the first trailer, but I think between the two trailers, I honestly felt they did show way too much. I think they showed almost all the funniest bits, almost all the best scenes, everything, I pretty much the entire movie was kind of spoiled between those two trailers. And, I, and I've avoided, I know they also put out like, you know, 
clips and things like that when as get closer to the release but i avoided all that stuff a lot because i'm like oh I'll watch the main trailers and that's it but as i'm watching the movie i'm like this scene would have been really funny if i hadn't already seen basically this whole scene you know and all and all the bad no no i still enjoyed the movie we'll get into the thoughts later but i, I still enjoy the movie very much but i think that a lot of the funniest parts a lot of the uh best parts i think were spoiled in the trailers I mean, but that and that's comes with the territory now like it's pretty much like do your best to avoid it or just go full-blown i might as well watch everything that they release and just go in the movie with what it is mm-hmm. and for the most part you and i are pretty good at trying to avoid that stuff so we can go in as uh not cold but pretty much as blind as we can but this one i mean it's just it, it was everywhere it was so hard to try to yeah. make it to today because it you know got well got released last night but i mean to basically make it to last night without seeing a little bit like i was mad that we saw what the third act was uh in the trailer so i was like why did you show that like that like that what should not have been shown and we'll get more into the third act but um i mean we kind of already spoke a little bit over but like in terms of the first film i mean obviously bless you uh, obviously, you're. We both are not fans of it, but I mean, go quick, quick overview of the first film. I I don't hate the first film, honestly. Um, I think that there's a lot of good things about it. I like a lot of the characters they created in that. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Margot Robbie made a great Harley Quinn. Um, I actually think most of the actors, and actually even most of the characters, I think were fine, um, as long as you leave out Enchantress. Um, but it, the, the the plot and the pacing of it, and I know how there's a whole big thing about how it got basically re-edited by the guys who did the trailers, and they added all the songs and the things like that. And um, so I still enjoyed it. I don't hate it the way a lot of people do, but it's definitely very flawed. I, I wish, I know that after the you know Justice League thing, there was this big thing about we want to see the Ayers cut of that, which I kind of blew off because I, I mean, you know, I figured they took him off the way for a reason. But from actually what I've heard of in interviews with him and with some of the stars in recent days, because they kind of asked, have been asking a lot of the people, you know, what do you think about the whole people calling for the air cut? Apparently, you know, it might have actually been a much better film. It, it was not, you know, uh, trailer style with full of pop songs. It was a, a lot uh, darker and more emotional. And so I at least would like to give it a chance. I don't think we'll see it, but I kind of wish we could. Yeah, that's one of those kind of like where, I mean, obviously with the huge success of the Snyder Cut, I think a lot of people were expecting an a air cut. Mm-hmm. Will we get it? Maybe with the success of, of this film, we might. Well, I think I'm not the only reason that. I think that there is a chance of it. I think if it was the kind of thing like the, like the Snyder Cut, where it was an unfinished thing with different effects had to be done, all that kind of thing. No chance they're putting more money into it. But I think that if it is, as I understand, uh, fully finished. eventually a finished cut, um, that I I think there's always a chance, like I said, I'm not holding my breath for it. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And then uh, Birds of Prey, I'll just touch on briefly, because it's part of the same. I consider that like Suicide Squad 2.5. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoyed Birds of Prey. I know that uh, on our year-end show, it was my number one movie of 2020. Now, granted, that's a year when almost nothing came out, but I thought it was a lot of fun, and I, I, a lot of people trashed it, um, which I think some of them have come around on it. I've heard people talk more positively about it later, but uh, I'm glad people have come around on it because, honestly, like a lot of – I'll get into it later, but a lot of the same things people praise this film for, it's like, well, Birds of Prey was doing the exact – kind of the same way as far as the tone and stuff and people bashed it for it so i'm I, i'm glad more people are coming around to it but i i really enjoyed that one yeah i mean with with suicide squad for me i mean to me it's better than bbs because i think bbs is a dog shit movie i think it's guard gutter trash suicide squad's not much better but i enjoy watching suicide squad more than bbs i'm not talking about the ultimate cut or whatever cut you want because that one's actually coherent and, and it is a better overall film than the theatrical garbage that we got. And I would love to see the air cut. Um, but I know that also means we'd be seeing more of uh, Leto's Joker, which I want no part of because I yeah. fucking hated that performance. But I, I mean, I, I hated that. I, from the very first time I saw a few people, oh, I'm like, oh, it's going to be good. When I Joker saw it, goes, hunka hunka, I'm like, fuck you. And the first time I saw the, the, the damage, like, first photos, I was like, no, no. 
I don't even care if he pulls on an Oscar performance. I hate the look of this guy. What the and, grill going on? And, yeah. yeah, everything about it was just wrong and bad. And someone should have stepped in, and no one did. And that's a lot of the blame right there. Because that's the part with Suicide Squad is that like it was an unnecessary forced half Joker film in a sense, because none of that shit was necessary and it was not needed in the plot. And that's the, that's, that's the problem with Suicide Squad, because like you said, I didn't necessarily hate any of the characters. Like, Margot Robbie's Harley was great. Will Smith's Deadshot was great. I liked Killer Croc. I liked Diablo. Uh, Rick Flagg was fine um, for Joel Kinnaman, but he wasn't he given was a whole lot. He was the street man for everybody else. Yeah, he about. wasn't given a whole lot to do. Waller was a bitch, but that's her character. You know, and Enchantress was obviously awful. But the problem was that the script just it, – it felt like they just didn't know what the fuck to do. And it was just all over the place. There was no structure. There was no tone. You know, they were all of a sudden become a family in the span of, like, one conversation at the bar. And you're just like, I feel like we're missing half a film here. And it was just kind of like an uneven film, but still was better than what we got out of BBS. In terms of Birds of Prey, I was like, you, I also enjoy Birds of Prey, and I actually – and leading up to this film, I did not rewatch Suicide Squad, but I did rewatch Birds of Prey. I think what most of the people didn't like about Birds of Prey is that it, it's not really a Birds of Prey movie. It's a Harley Quinn movie, and then like the last twenty minutes is Birds of Prey, which I, I, would, love. I wouldn't even mind if it was a Harley Quinn movie. But it's like when you name it that, oh, yeah, don't. Don't tell us it's a Birds. You of can't Quinn. go change the title later, as much as they tried to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's like, and I, I enjoyed. The film, I thought Margot Robbie did a fantastic job as Harley on that film. I loved Ewan McGregor's uh, Black Mask. I loved his chewing of the scenery. Uh, I liked Zaz. I, I obviously we we've talked recently about Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I loved her as Huntress, um, Canary. Everything about the movie, I really really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, I don't really get the hate. I think the hate is mostly just because of people. I think one day full fledged Birds of Prey film, and they felt like they were kind of uh, cut off at the knees or misrepresented uh, because it was basically a Harley Quinn film and they were basically side pieces. But I mean, going into this film, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where the cast is so large, there's so many actors that were like, oh, I love him, I love him, I love her, I love that person, I love them. Oh my God, there's so much great shit about this. And that like the anticipation was just through the roof. Um, so the overall thoughts of the film before we start deep diving into this thing, uh, what were your overall thoughts of the movie? Um, overall, I feel, I feel like for me, this movie was actually a victim of overhype because I really enjoyed this movie a lot, but I, from people who saw early screenings, both critics and just, you know, regular people, I know that, you know, got to see early screenings, they were all just praising this like oh my gosh this is like one of the best superhero movies of all time it's great i loved every minute of it it was you know so unpredictable it was so you know funny and so and so i went in there just with i think expectations set too high whereas if i went in there with nothing i would have enjoyed it even more than i did now i, I still enjoyed it quite a bit but i think i went in there just expecting more than what it was um that being said uh overall thoughts um i Again, I really enjoy all the characters are created, and there were a lot of them, which we'll talk about. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the action scenes are done very well. Um, obviously, they get to use that R rating. They get you know lots of plenty of gore and, and you know cool kills and blood everywhere. Um, the language is flying, which is it, you know it's fine. I mean, it's that's what these characters are like. I mean, they're not going to be you know Superman, you know, good you know. Oh no, right away. <laughs> language. Oh wait, wrong, wrong franchise. Um, <laughs> so, but, but yeah, I mean, it, the, the overall movie I I really enjoyed. Um, a couple parts of it kind of fell flat for me. Uh, like you were talking about in Suicide Squad, uh, how there was that after one scene, suddenly they're all a family. Yeah, I felt like there's they they wanted you to feel for uh, 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 Bloodsport and Ratcatcher too, like especially because that one bus scene. With like made that connection, like I'm gonna you know, make sure you get out of this. I'll make sure you get out of this. And oh, I lost my father, and oh, I have problems with my daughter. And they want to like create this connection. I didn't feel that at all. It felt like they were trying really hard to make that connection, and that part just fell flat for me. Um, but other than that, because, well, that's one of the things I think because of the 
the overhype I was talking about. Everybody's talking about, oh, this movie also has so much heart. I'm like, I didn't feel that heart at all. I, I, I felt it was a ton of fun and I enjoyed it. But but it again, that was more due to my expectations. The, the movie never claimed that it was going to go a certain way. I think people were trying to push it as a certain way and I just didn't feel it the same way they did. I mean, first off, in terms of uh, wrong franchise, there are, I think, six people in this movie that were in the MCU. So it's a it's a full on. <laughs> I started to wonder if I started James to keep a tally of like MCU, 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 MCU. <laughs> kind of well, you, I, I will say, uh, just it's not really a main character in the movie, so I do want to mention, um, and this is a spoiler review. I miss apparently. I didn't know Taika Waititi was in this movie. Oh yeah! Oh no! I I, I was like I, I caught him like right. I'm like, is that Taika? The first time they showed him, I'm like, is that Taika Waititi? And I wasn't quite sure because like, they never like really got a really good yeah. look at him until later on, an additional scene. I'm like, it's yeah. totally Taika Waititi, and he was actually talking too. It's yeah, totally like it's, like the first time, like, I think it was like the first shot they showed him like shooting up. I was like, is that Taika Waititi? Right. And then like when he's laying there dead, I was like, I can't tell. And then sure enough, like yeah, then I asked him like. Of course they got fucking Taika Waititi. And I think that's why a lot of people just, you know, being friends of James Gunn or had worked with James Gunn just wanted to kind of come in and they knew that, oh, yeah. you know, they were, he wasn't going to give everybody a, a major role. But like like uh, uh, Palm Clementif, how would you pronounce it? Uh, yeah, Mantis. Man Mantis. She's another one. I think you and I both talked about how we saw her. Like, wait, that's that's Mantis. That's Palm. And I like, I think it is, but I, wait, I had to wait to get home and double check. I'm like, okay, I was right. Yeah, it was one of those, like the first time I watched it, I was like, she looks too much like her. And then I went to like IMDb and I started searching. And of course the movie just got released and they're trying to keep shit hidden. So I was like, all right, well, she's not listed. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm just, I don't want to assume, but and then the second time I watched, I was like, if that's not her, like they got someone who looked just like her. And then yeah, I saw well, them going, Oh, there's a huge Easter egg. I'm like, okay. So I was right. <laughs> Cause Let's say, well, because because the movie, uh, the first person you see in the whole movie is Michael Rooker. Although Michael yeah. Rooker is in every single one of James Gunn movies because they're like you know him, 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 and for the most part Nathan Fillion as well. Yeah. Um. So they showed Michael Rooker, but and then they showed uh, and then when I saw Palm, I started to wonder. I'm like, I wonder if like they're all in here somewhere. Like, that would have been, here. that would have been the best if they were like. Like especially like in, in Corto Maltese, like the, the, the just people like and they're like Chris, like Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Batista, Vin, they're all running around just as random people, and you're playing like a where's Waldo on the guard. Or just like the other people have a up, in their face, so you can't even tell for if sure. That ends up being like a legit thing. That this movie jumps up another like five points for me just yeah. because of the balls of Jason goes, Yeah, i I did that. Yeah. Find them, have fun <laughs> with that shit. Because that's such a James Gunn thing to do, and I almost like it, it makes me sad knowing that probably not didn't happen. Oh, but that'd be so great. Like it also was like, why does that guy look like Bradley Cooper? <laughs> 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 uh but yeah, like kind of like one of those things where it's like um you know, like they put Daniel Craig in Star Wars or in Tom oh, Cook, I think like one time that. through the I think it was actually Rogue One was the one I was looking at, and there's like 20 people listed like like well-known like actors and celebrities of like this yeah. that played stormtroopers in those movies that i didn't even know about because I'm that's, like, that's, why, that's why i love about this is because a lot of them they're not doing it for the paycheck they're not doing like, it yeah, for I want to be in a star wars movie just, even by yeah, a non-speaking role in a stormtrooper yeah. outfit exactly they just are fans like we are and they just want to be a part of the world they don't have to be a big part they just have to be a part of it and that's what i also like you can get mad about the death total or death toll in this film of certain people, but it's like, they don't, they just want to be a part of it because of James Gunn. I don't think if James Gunn was directing this, we would have gotten near as much of the cast that we got in this film. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because everyone loves working for James Gunn. Um, I was surprised we didn't see Elizabeth Banks in the film for, for instance, yeah. because she's almost in all of his films. I have to wonder but, how much of it was just availability for people. Because, and it never like, could be, because I know she's directing stuff and, and doing a lot of other things. But it's just everyone loves working with the guy, so they're willing to show up for a day and and do stuff just for the sake of, hey, it's it you know it's a superhero movie. Now they don't have to cast me in anything else because I'm in the franchise technically, <laughs> you know. But it, I did a solid for James, or James just like, hey, you want to be in this movie for a day? Cool, you know. And we'll get into some of those roles, but yeah, I I I like that MCU because it used to be like you can't cross, like you can't be on one or the other 
But it's because things like with DCEU or World of DC, whatever the hell you want to call it, it's like, yeah, you guys, you guys just kind of do your own fucking thing. Like you're not, you're not competition. Like it's fine. Like the MCU is the MCU. World of DC, DCEU, whatever you want to call it, is like, okay, cool. You, you're gonna just kind of be like the animated films, where it's like you're just going everywhere. You're not structuring everything. So it's like, you guys want to be on it? Go, go the fuck ahead. Have fun. Like we're not gonna get mad anymore. Just. As long as you guys are good and ha- and you guys enjoy it and you guys aren't like abandoning us to go do this, go ahead and have fun with it. And that's that's kind of the and like if you guys want to know my my thoughts overall thoughts, I mean obviously watch the non spoiler review. I went into great detail on it, but um, I'm gonna push back on that heart thing a little bit. But we'll go further into it because there are some elements that I thought there's some real good heart in the movie. Uh, some scenes that I thought really fleshed out the characters and made it a little more, uh, not emotional, but it added some emotional weight to the characters. I'm not saying that particular scene that you mentioned was the one that did it, but I I actually thought there was a lot more heart in this film um, because that's one thing that James Gunn's really good at, like Guardians. Guardians was a straight-up comedy, but there were some beautiful heart moments in that first film, even in, the, in Volume 2, which a lot of people shit on, but I actually really enjoy Volume 2. And I think there is that in this film as well. Um... Which, like I said, we'll, we'll we'll get into that when we get to those certain characters. But obviously, we're gonna start with I and I said this in my review. Basically, the comic book version of Omaha Beach. It's the Saving Private Ryan of comic book films. I feel like this opening number. I mean, we get we get the opening of, of Rooker's savant, which I'm assuming his power is that he's got ricochet deadly aim. I didn't look up any of these superpowers. Like I'm going. Yeah, that's just it. I know. I know nothing about any of these characters. So it, I mean, I was so I mean, I, I, cut his hair because like his long stringy hair was driving me insane. But we get to see Rooker, which we all love, Michael Rooker. And of course, we're we're starting to see the rest of the team. We see Pete Davidson as Blackguard, which I'm sorry, Pete Davidson is just basically being Pete Davidson. I don't he think. Is, but I thought I thought it worked very well. I actually liked him yeah. in here. He's one of the people that. I don't there was think never I a understand. moment in this film, though, that I was like, oh, he's acting. He's like, no, he's just fucking Pete Davidson in a suit. And he's just walking around being Pete Davidson. <laughs> like, that's what he's he's Pete Davidson, him. but I think that the Pete Davidson uh, style of humor, his his character, I think would have worked well if he was able to be in more of this movie. The only um, part I thought I, got, I think I got a good chuckle at him for was like the when uh, when uh, Savant's being introduced to his team and you look at Pete Davidson, he's like doing the to the guard. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's, a, I don't know why that got me, but just like, that's such like a douchey thing to do. And well, you know why that got you? Yeah. Because that's like the only joke of his that wasn't in the trailers. Because like that whole helicopter scene with him and no, the werewolf. No, him with the werewolf thing. I don't remember that in the trailers. It wasn't in the original trailers. That was totally trailers. in the trailers. That was in all the trailers. I, ne- I never saw that in the original trailers. Oh, that was totally in them, yeah. Maybe yeah, in one they, of the ones you watched. I don't know. You watched that entire scene. Well, uh, then you got him doing the whole like screw job thing. Which I didn't think that like was legit. I thought he was like trying to draw them out, and then I was like, "Wait, did he seriously do it?" No, it, it's one of those things where like it, that was one of those scenes where as soon as he started going, "Hey guys, it's, it's me," you know, I'm the I'm like, "He's totally about to die. He's gonna be the first one to go." And sure enough, oh, boom! No, I, we knew he was dead, and then just straight up just obliterates his face. <laughs> Which I, I was gonna say, like, out of all the characters to do that to, that was the best character. I will say that, that although that, that is not the first death. Well, well, death. Um, no, I that was, loved, there was a there was a fake death. But I loved that fake fake death. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the, the the it was and here's here's the thing about Weasel, which that's such a weird fucking character. And of course, they got Sean Gunn to do. Yeah, you can only tell just from the way he walks. I'm like, that's totally Sean Gunn. Yeah, it's like his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, but it's just like. You're watching him. You're like, I have no idea how to feel about this character. Like, I really, it was one of those. that's like, if there's gonna be characters who are gonna die, I kind of hope Weasel dies because I really don't know how to react what? to this character the whole film. But when he falls and he starts splashing, and you hear Rick go, "Did no one ask if he could swim?" And you just got that. And the, the what to me that what made it land was just like everyone in the in the office and just the dead silence. It, and it, just, no, it was just. It was, it was, I mean, it was it was funny enough when he starts swimming, and then it was funny, of course, when when Flag says, "Did no one think to check?" I'm like already laughing, and then cut to Waller kind of looking at other people like, like motherfuckers, why didn't you check this shit? But no, but it's 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 the dead silence of the office, and just hearing. <laughs> That's what makes the comedy so great. Because if it was like you were hearing all the splashing and all that stuff, and and there was all this noise going around, it wouldn't have worked. But having it just be dead silent, everyone going, shit, and hearing. 
And then, he, and then he just like goes down like this and Savant goes to save him and he's just like, he's dead. It's like, you didn't even try to resuscitate him. Like, you didn't do yeah, shit. I didn't mouth to mouth. I mean, but I mean, but it, it, would you? That's you know, what I'm saying. Why, well, I wouldn't expect exactly, you to Exactly. But I mean, like, in, in terms of like, uh, and then of course, obviously in the mid credits we see that he's alive and just pops up and just like skitters into the into the jungle, which uh, part of me was wondering is that if that was like later that night, or if that was like after the whole event of the film, I think it was supposed to be just like later after they left the beach. That same, which kind of bums me out that we didn't see him then through the rest of the movie because yeah. that means he was out there during that whole thing. Uh, but yeah, Weasel. Maybe he'll show up in Peacemaker. Maybe, maybe Weasel was like, yeah, okay. Um, I think I think, I, I think he was good for what he was. A fun character. He could. I think he was good for what he was. He wasn't given enough screen time to really matter, but I think of what we got with him, I think worked. Yes. Um, Mongol. I mean, there's not really much to say about it. I, 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 I wrote down like I wrote down like little notes for each person. I go, this year's Slipknot because she just jumps up, which I, I love how she jumps up like I'm a badass, and then she just goes, she just starts screaming bloody murders. Like, did you ever think? What did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> you know? And no one, and none of us got the the question answered. But the people that were doing their bets, like, is she an alien? Is she a god? What is she? We never found out. I kind of wanted to find out about that. Um, uh, Captain Boomerang, I don't think none of us really gave a shit about him. We didn't care about him in the first fucking film when he I, showed I will, say, I will say this is one of those roles that Jai, Jai Courtney actually worked for. We, we've, we've talked about plenty of movies where we did not like him in it. Um, but I think this is one of the ones I thought he was really good in the role. I didn't care about the character that you're right. And he's one I of honestly favorite. cared more about his death because of how Harley reacted to it and less that we were losing him. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I like Jai Courtney for the most part. Like, like I said, I loved him in Spartacus. I thought that was his best performance ever was in Spartacus. I haven't really liked him in anything outside of that, but it was more Harley's Buffalo. reaction. What's that? Except oh, yeah, yeah, I liked him in Buffalo. I, I, forget, I keep forgetting him about Buffalo. <laughs> um, but it was more Harley's reaction to his death that sold it than just him dying in general. Mm -hmm. Um Javelin, uh, Flu, Flula Borg. I really kind of wanted him to stick around more. I like, I really like that guy as an actor, and I just was hoping he would get some more screen time because this guy just—he's a funny guy. He's a really funny guy, but he never gets enough screen time in movies to really like bust out. See, I, I, I think that if you had more of him, then it would get really old really fast i think that having him up in little roles like this is good but i i honestly would not have wanted him to stick around longer i i i, I don't disagree in terms of the character of javelin i don't know where that character would have fit in this film i'm just talking about i really just want this actor to kind of just get a bigger <laughs> role in a movie um like say so he was funny in pitch perfect too but it's pitch perfect i mean he's only in it for you know, a little bit here because he's the villain group, right. but it's it's one of those things where it's like I just really, I really want Flula Borg to just get a bigger bigger uh, acting job, so people can really kind of see him. Whether it's a TV series or something, just give 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 the guy some time, give the guy some screen time, let him get noticed. Um, but but yeah, I, I liked his interaction with TDK. Like, what's a TDK stand for? It's my name. Your names are letters. <laughs> all names are letters <laughs> and then which brings us to obviously tdk nathan fillion who obviously anyone who watches the channel we love nathan fillion and we were so excited that he was in this movie and then as you're watching you're like he's gonna die so fast oh it was that's just it is is i i love nathan fillion and i was happy to see him come on this because i knew he would because james gunn and he's he said himself if the phone ever rings it's james gunn he's answered the phone and says yes whatever the question is yes yeah. i'll do it because, and he was already in shape for, for the rookie. So it's not like he had right. to do much. But I, I knew even before going to the movie, even before the trailers or anything, I knew he was going to be one of the people that's going to die off very quick. Because the only image we ever really got of him was him just with, with his arms missing. Like we never really saw, saw anything else of him in any no, of the no, all, all walking, you know, that first scene. But that's about Drinking the Mr. Pib for the, yeah. for the uh, sponsorship. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's the, the thing is, is before getting farther into the cast that, and what happens to everyone. I will just say that uh, the other thing about the a little bit of the overhype and a little bit with the trailers that I already touched on is that in, 
a lot of people who saw the movie and a lot of the like cast and crew mm -hmm. when like trying to promote the movie are, are you know pitching like oh you know this is a movie where don't get attached to anybody anything that anybody can die you don't know what's going to happen and it's like well you kind of can tell from the trailers who's actually in the whole movie and who's barely in it <laughs> but you also know who's untouchable harley is untouchable king shark better have been fucking untouchable or i would have fucking hated this film uh idris elba obviously was going to make it to the end same thing with cena um and then everyone else was kind of a toss-up but like obviously those four you knew were were untouchable well though, even they were even saying though that it, it like the, the cast and the producers and the, and the dc people and stuff were saying you know oh when when uh james gunn did this he he said you know do i get to have you know full control to do whatever i want and like yep i, I can kill any character i want yep even harley quinn could die you know and they were like you know trying to push like he could kill anybody and it's like we know who's not gonna die because we can oh. tell who's in the whole movie from the trailers honestly it would make well but, but still some people guys die, die in the final act well one but it, it's honestly one of those things where it's like harley doesn't or marco robbie doesn't even know if she's gonna do harley ever again so it's one of those things where it would have kind of actually been a nice shocker if they would have killed Harley. And there was one part where I think is when when they're in the final, she falls through the roof of that building that's coming down. I'm just like, Harley never would have survived that. She would not have survived that fall. Like, I'm sorry. She's not superhuman. She would have been dead. And then she just climbs back up to the top. I'm just like, I mean, okay, it's Harley, but still, like, Harley would not have survived yeah. that. Not like, like a, like, yeah, it's one Harley, of those things. Like Harley would have drowned at the end too, being where she was the entire time, which we'll touch on. I was like, Harley would Harley would have died like three times in that final act. <laughs> but yeah. it's one of those things, just suspension of disbelief. It's like it's like her there's the scene where she's escaping from the palace or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Which, which we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll into that, but yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Yeah, but we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna just suspend disbelief and just enjoy the movie. Yeah, we'll have a Harley section. We because we obviously we're gonna talk about Harley, but uh Back to Nathan Fillion's TDK. When they said his name, I, you knew, like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it the? Uh, was it the deconstructing? The de de detachable kid. The detachable kid. And Harley goes, "What?" <laughs> and he just goes, "Pop." The arms. Pop. Well, that's just did is the, the arms. <laughs> the arms go flying up, and I'm expected to like you know go up there and grab some guns. Instead, it's like up there like slapping people. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh the my. funniest part about the whole thing is that as you're watching the arms do this, is I'm I'm picturing the person that's actually controlling the arms, like that are green screen, like green screen, and you just watch them just go like this, like walking <laughs> up and just going. Ooh. It's like I'm picturing the person who's actually having to do that, and it's just it's so fucking ridiculous and hilarious. And then Harley, well, they start, they're all shooting the arms, and he's on the ground, just going, oh. yeah, like freaking. <laughs> freaking the fuck out and harley was like what the fuck and we're like i didn't choose the team and like <laughs> i was like it's it's hilarious to the point where they're all just and the arms are still just floating up there <laughs> but yes uh, nathan fillion sells it like a champ just screaming bloody murder on the ground and that's why we love nathan fillion is that it doesn't matter how small the role is he's gonna fucking sell it yeah. but yeah i mean it's it's a uh, it's it's straight madness in that opening number and obviously they teased that harley and rick were were dead and it's like of course they're not fucking dead it was like unless they've just completely you know averted expectations and all the trailer stuff we had seen was bullshit yeah which if they had done that i mean ballsy ballsy if they did but uh, we knew they didn't they would have had uproar if that had happened exactly so and then of course you know you see because the whole time they're doing this i'm like well, where's everyone else? Like, are they the second group that comes in because this one failed? And then it was also just like, team two on the other side of the map. And it's like, oh, Waller did Rick flag dirty. And that never comes back around either. That's, I think, I don't know if he ever, he just never realized it. But dude, she fed Rick flag up like a fucking platter, which obviously in the final act of the film, maybe that because of what happens, that makes more sense to why she did what she did. But dude, she offered a flag to die. Well, I don't. I don't think he ever knows. I mean, again, we're, we're kind of maybe reading a little too far into this, but I don't think he knows that he was so that, that, that they all were. They were basically. Is, all yeah. he knows is he was on a team that attacked. They all, most of them, all died, and he uh, ended up. Well, I was going to say got captured, but he got found by the other people. Um, I think. I think. I think for the most part, another team shows up to supposedly like rescue him. him. 
Yeah. They, he doesn't know that they were already sent there for something else at yeah. the same time. Exactly. And I think that's probably where the, where the, the, the loose thought process is, is that yeah. he thinks that they're there to save him, not that they were a part of the same fucking mission. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the, that whole, that whole opening number, like they said, we knew they were all going to die, but it was just, it was, it was like, that sets the tone for the rest of this film. And he's like, if you thought that this movie was going to be like any other superhero film or outside of like Deadpool, then this opening number with David, with, with Pete Davidson's face ex- basically exploding. Well, especially <laughs> when they're, they're panning around different characters, you see Pete Davidson's face, and then you see yeah, Al, you know, Al flailing, screaming while she's burning under the helicopter. Yeah, and you're and seeing the, the best, best scene, music. What? And the best shot was, uh, uh, what's his name? Savant, over there with that, that goldfish, whatever it is. Pick up, like or, yeah, the sweet revenge, and I was like, that's the, that's the only good good part about Michael Worker is like not like he didn't really do much outside of like screaming like a bitch and flipping away because yeah, yeah. you knew someone had to get their head blown off. Yeah, you can't you can't tease the whole bomb in the head thing without letting someone. So I guess he's the Slipknot of this movie. Yeah, yeah he, he is the Slipknot technically, but I mean Slipknot tried to jump up a building and run away, so I'm giving that to Mongol. But it's uh, but yes, the bird coming back around and, and eating part of his brain was like a, <laughs> you know, it almost it almost and then and then, like I said, the, the intro, you know, you got the yeah the fast music and it fast forwarding through and like showing every dead body and you're seeing Nathan Billion still dying, <laughs> shit, and, you know, and then obviously Harley gets captured, Rick Flag gets captured you know in a which, sense which i'm sorry one of my favorite moments in the entire movie was, which is like why did my people not tell well not let me know you're here and they're like i i didn't see any people we didn't see anybody <laughs> and then, and they took a poke at me and it's like i pretend they were all my mother and i killed them yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then King Shark, like okay. pops up a ring and a figure in the figure yeah okay so let's go ahead and jump into the main cast um for, first things first who was your favorite character overall? Um, I don't know if any one stood out to me most. I think I would almost, I think, go with King Shark. Yes, but it's it's yes. kind of like there. I, I he didn't have a whole lot to do in in, in the movie. Oh, he had so much to do. And, it's- and a lot of times he was just kind of there for the you know brief comic relief you know say something you know dumb, but uh, but I, I I still think I enjoyed him the most because he was new. I think I think actually Harley Quinn would probably technically be my favorite character, but you know we've seen her in two other movies, so he was you know something new. See me me mine was obviously I mean is that a shocker that King Shark was my favorite? Let's be real here. But after that it would have to definitely be Polka Dot Man. Um, yeah. I loved Polka Dot Man. Uh. First things first, Amanda Waller, Viola Davis, is she not just the most despicable, despised character in the DC world? When is she going to die? She plays so well, too, yeah. She plays so well, but God, you just hate her guts. And he's like, when she gets walloped, finally, I was like, thank you, God. I was waiting. Someone needs to fucking hit her. Like, God. Like, when she's threatening uh, Bloodsport's child, and you see everyone else going, you weren't really gonna do that, were you? <laughs> like, fuck yeah. Once I well, started that, and even even at that point, I kind of started thinking, I bet somebody's gonna like, you know, do something, and, take something. Over. and then sure enough, later the way they hint at it some more, I'm like, okay, it's definitely coming now. Yeah, like you, you didn't expect it to be that character because like that's the one like you barely see. Like I was expecting it to be the blonde or I the blonde uh, or Steve a G who also yeah, did yeah. the body work for King he, Shark. He was on set King Shark, yep. Yeah, on set King Shark. Uh, which you know, great double duty for that guy. I think he was great. Um, but yes, I think, I think uh, James Gunn always tries to do that. He did it, you know, with with uh, obviously his brother Sean Gunn too, where he's like, you know, okay, you're doing all this great work for us. Like he was like on set Rocket Raccoon standing, Sean Gunn was. Um, but he's like, but you know, I want you to be able to show your face too, so he gives him like a secondary role they can also play. Yeah, it's James James Gunn takes care of his people basically. Yeah. But yeah, Waller is just horrible. Like I'm. There needs to be a Suicide Squad film just so we can see Waller die. Like, Waller needs to die at some point. And if we need to have another Suicide Squad film for that to happen, then so fucking be it. Because that she's worse than the Joker. She's worse than, like, 90% of the characters in, in the DC world. Uh, she's just a horrible human being. But um, Rick, let, let's start with Rick Flagg. Uh, Joel Kinnaman. I think you and I are 
we're okay with him. Like, we don't hate him, but he hasn't really done anything to really kind of – I mean, we liked him in RoboCop. You know, I think he was fine. But, like, in the first Suicide Squad, he just felt uncomfortable. I think that, like I said, the first one, I think he was the straight man everybody else played against. I think this one, they allowed him to be a more fun character. He actually got so relaxed. Yeah. He was having so much more fun. Like, his, yeah. he had jokes. It landed so much better. He just – his his relationship with Harley made sense. Like, it was a mutual respect, friendship kind of thing. Um, and he was one of the things where, like, clearly this obviously isn't the first or the second mission of the Suicide Squad. He's been doing this for a little while now at least by the sounds of it, it just, it looked like Joel just enjoyed himself more in this movie. And I, and you could tell that watching, watching the first film and watching this film, it's two different Joel Kinnamans. And I really, I didn't care for Rick flag in the first film. I loved Rick flag in this film. He was a lot of fun and his inevitable end, like that was the one death that I was like, Oh shit. Like if there was if there was ever a shocker death in the movie that I was not expecting to happen, it was Joel Kinnaman's Rick Flag. I did not expect Rick Flag to die, and just the way he did die too was just kind of a. And I guess I guess we'll we'll, we'll, we'll roll this into John Cena's Peacemaker because you can't talk about Rick, the end of Rick Flag without having Peacemaker in this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you are probably one of the harshest critics of John Cena as an actor. You can't stand John Cena. Uh, you told me that John Cena is not a good actor. No, I, I think I, 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 qualifier. Uh, John Cena, when John Cena tries to be serious, is a bad actor. When he does tries to be tough guy, you know, villain in F nine, he's horrible. When he made when he made his movies in his first run at Hollywood with you know, the Marine and Twelve Rounds and those kind of things, horrible. Now, granted, those were WWE films. So. Yeah. No. Well, so was the rundown, technically, but anyway. Um, you know what I'm saying like, but the rundown had like legit cast, right? But, but and I think that I think I think he is a lot like Channing well, Tatum. I was gonna say in some ways like Channing Tatum, where when he learned to just you know he can be fun, he can be funny, and that's where his strength lies. When he showed up in Trainwreck, his his small role there was hilarious. The movie in, theaters, in the blockers, is a movie. blockers is a kind of hit and miss movie for me, but I thought it was actually pretty really funny in it. And in this one, where he's playing like this, you know, he, he, I mean, he's technically a serious character, but he's totally, you know, playing it over the top, and he's supposed to be cartoonish, and it's definitely com- comedy to his performance. I thought he fit this real well. I still think he's got weird-looking proportions and stuff, but <laughs> I just, he just he just looks weird the way he stands and walks, and stuff, especially when you got him standing there tidy whities I don't need to see that. That part, that part was funny just because of the ridiculousness of it, and he was just so proud. And like even Blush was like, really, why chase? That's racist. No, it's not. <laughs> but but see, so, but, but but when he does comedy like this, I think that he actually can do a very good job. And I thought he did he was great here. I this was to me hands down his best performance in any film by by a long, long margin. Mm-hmm. John Cena was awesome in this film. Hilarious. I loved every aspect of him, whether it's uh, the one moment where King Shark makes the little peacemakers that does not look like me. Well, it's a pretty good job. <laughs> kind of no, like that. It's, it's actually very nice, but <laughs> yeah, to to him and and, and Bloodsport, which their interactions together was some of my best. But we'll talk about that that one scene of them really uh, here in a, in a moment. But I just I really really enjoyed John Cena's approach to it because like like you said when he can make fun of himself or be the serious character, but it's obviously a joke works great. Obviously. I mean, we saw that joke in, in the comic or in the, in the, in the trailer, but the bag of dicks joke still is fucking fun. Oh, well that, that is another one that I, I, well, when I first saw it originally in the trailer, when the red band trailer laughed my ass off, but I wish I had seen it for the first time in the theater. Cause it, it showed up in the theater. I'm like, Oh, there's that joke. That was funny. And it was still funny. But it doesn't hit you quite the same way. But yeah, the whole the whole eat bag of dicks and do anything for liberty and you know call all, me all, shark and make a douche at all costs, even if I have to kill every man, woman, and child to get it. You know, it's it's I, a great character. It's a great it's a great character. And it was one of those things where it's like when he gets shot, I'm like, wait, so is his show a flashback show? That's not like, like is it a prequel? I don't know. Yeah, and then we see the very end, I'm like, okay, there we go. And I love and obviously like, they're gonna have well that's this we'll, we'll we'll just talk about that briefly since we're talking about this character. We're, I mean, we, we're gonna tie it into Rick, we're tying it into Rick Flag's oh. thing as well. So that's that's but that's that's also the thing that I loved about John Cena's performance in this too 
is that it, ha it he's more than just a one note character. He has layers because when we do get to that inevitable turn, uh, where John Cena goes heal everybody, finally he go he went heal. Um, well, technically he went heal in F nine, but he he was a good guy and he went heal in this. Well, he's a villain. I don't fucking care. But when he turns because of the hard drive and everything, I love the. He didn't want to do it. He didn't because it was Rick. And I, I like at that moment where he's just like, please don't make me do this. Like, I don't want to please stop. And when they're fighting and everything like that, I, first of all, I also love the, uh, the director decision of the first part of that fight. It's just all on his, his helmet. I thought that was a little gimmicky. I wasn't no, sure. I really liked that. It was, it, was, it, was, it was okay. I was worried they're going to do the whole fight that way. I'm glad they could. No, because as soon as, as soon as their angle was lost, they, they, they went away from it. I liked that shot. It was, it was a nice shot. But it was it, when we get to that inevitable moment where he 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 stabs Rick, and he hits it like you see it in his face, like like he didn't want to do that to the point where he's almost shocked. Like I can't fucking believe I just did that. Well, that's like, just I, that was a great moment for Cena as an actor. His well, face sells it that, beautifully. Up until that point, it felt to me a lot like uh, Civil War, where it's like there's two guys. Who have totally opposing viewpoints but neither one was really a villain it's like i totally understand peacemaker's motivations and his attitude like no this is going to cause even more problems if this gets out you know that kind of thing yeah and so i totally understood you know where he's coming from and he has some valid points and you know flag Rick has his valid obviously points. has valid points as well so it's, but it's that it's that moment where he finally shoots him like okay now i guess he is a villain and you kind of see that uh late later on where he's like you know when it comes to rat catcher where he's like going to shoot her and, and and she's like, just fine, take the hard drive. You know, why do you have to kill me? And he's like, cause, cause I'm, I'm thorough. thorough. And it's like, okay. At that point you're kind of like, okay, I guess he did make a full turn. Into, into yeah. Cause it's like, all right, well you're, you're cause, cause, cause there's that moment where they're at the bar where he, he um, acknowledges Sebastian, which I love Sebastian. <laughs> oh wait, but we'll, we'll talk about Sebastian a little bit later. But when he acknowledges like, you forgot about the rat and like him and rat catcher have that little moment Right there, and to, for him to turn on her, but even but even then, once again, when he kills Rick, and 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 uh, Rick makes that moment like peacemaker, what a you know what a crock or what a joke. I forgot what he says precisely. What a joke. Yeah, what a joke. Which also just like said, great death for for Rick Flag, because uh, it, it mattered. Like that was the one that was like, oh shit. And like I said, Cena sells it perfectly. But then you get that moment where Ratcatcher is right there, and she grabs. And he's like, just don't, please. Like, please don't make me. Like, just just give it to me. And she runs. He's just like, all right. And that, that, that's the point. I was like, fuck it. It's what I got to do now. Like, that's it. Like, everyone's turning on me, you know, kind of thing. And then, of course, when when Bloodsport ridiculously falls down every every level <laughs> and you have that standoff and he looks down and you see – that, like, he's like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to have to kill everybody. Like, it, that that's it. You know, kind of thing, and then and then to have that callback too of the smaller bullet, like when the bullet, as soon as they both pulled their guns, I totally knew what was going to happen, but I still loved it. I still like, loved it. Uh, yeah, but it's like so, and then like and and like I said, we'll, we'll go now in, into into blood sport. I I, I love that that first initial reaction. It's like where, where Viola Davis describes blood sport to uh, who was she describing it to? Was it I can't remember who she was describing blood sport to when he's cleaning up like the floor. It's like his father trained him as a child to kill, and he can kill with any item and object. Blah 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 blah. And then she verbatim says the exact same thing about Peacemaker. He's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? He can do exactly the same thing. I can't, but better. I hit things center mass. I hit him even more center. I <laughs> I hit him with you know. Poor, I have smaller bullets. They go through yours. <laughs> it's just like, and I love both their reactions to King Shark. The first, I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> kind of thing. But their their banter back and forth, uh, especially when he called. I I was I will say the one scene when they're um and it's in the trailer where they're about to go save Harley. It almost felt like Cena's dialogue was was out of order because Idris Elba makes the comment about him wearing a toilet seat on his head, and then uh, John Cena mentions, says something else about Harley, and then Rick and then I think like Idris Elba says like oh you know when Rick when when Flag has a, a rag in his mouth don't pull on it, and Cena goes what the fuck. And then his next dialogue is like, it's not a toilet seat. It's, it's you know, it's liberty or whatever. And it's like, it, it's a beacon of liberty. It's a beacon of liberty. It's like, it wasn't, I, he reacted like a whole full sentence 
I, I didn't feel like it was out of place. I, I feel like it was like, you know, he 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 like you know said, you know, toys in your head, but then you know, which he lodged that thought in his head, but while he finished the conversation, and then as he started to run off, he's like, Oh, and it's not a, a but no, but he goes, head. no, but he goes, motherfucker, and then it cuts to them getting out like like he just realized like third like 12 you know 15 seconds later that he called it a toilet seat it's just, it, felt, it felt weird but it still it still was a great like little moment but their initial moment in the obviously the bag of dicks line was great um but you're the leader you're, you lead i i lead you go eat a bag of dicks <laughs> it's like for liberty and you know and he calls him out like i think you just that's your you know way of just doing shit for the sake of doing it and then he calls him out for being an assassin which you know good little banter back and forth but their initial uh, trying to one up one another when they go into the, that that shit was great. Which at first, and I, I guess it makes more sense because they were technically the freedom fighters. I was like, why are these people just standing around? Because there's t- there's parts where like they're walking up to him and they're just they're, they're full on looking at it. like they just killed your people and you're just like like are you in shock? Like they're not coming up quietly on you. Like they're making noise. And like there was well, the first one, couple like, were like silent shots or things like that. And so I thought, okay, the first one is to hit But then, but like, like, after he, after I like, shoot a couple, uh, it has a flamethrower and stuff. You think the rest would be like, but, well, no, there's like three of them standing right in front of Bloodsport and they just kind of just, they're just standing there. I'm like, you're not screaming, you're not calling out for help. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's still, like, even though I guess they're like, well, these guys are clearly not the, uh, not the army of, but they're murdered like four people were right in front of us. Right. So I think they're just like, well, wait, who are these guys? And by yeah. the time they can figure it out, but, they- but Cena's, Cena's moment where he kills the dude sleeping was great. But like, you get the, you know, he, he's, you know, shooting whatever he's shooting at the people with like the, the boat, you know, and then you get the fire scene. And then, uh, the, um, Un- un- unnecessary dick shot, <laughs> dick, <laughs> dick shot, uh, and then of course the the fan into the groin of, of the tub. Um, that was great, and then of course the that was the best one. He's like, no, he's, like show off. And he's like, they do it for he's doing it. He's showing off his what, dope as dope? fuck, dope as fuck, yeah. And he's like, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> I love that line. That's so fucking great. Like that was to me was like I was like they I like we get it. It's a dick measuring contest. But when he's like, shit, <laughs> fuck, that's true. And I was like, that right there is is James Gunn. Yeah, that's James Gunn to a T. And then of course, like like you mentioned earlier, when they when they show up and they're like, we 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 came to save you. How come no one called? We didn't see anybody. There was there was no one here. And then we we obviously like we'll stay on Bloodsport Hill a little bit before before we go to the next people, but obviously Bloodsport, he's he's this movie's Will Smith. You know, he basically does that. I think he's cooler than Deadshot. Honestly, you know, before this, the movie, before they revealed like characters, I thought he was just replacing Will Smith. Oh, I honestly yeah. thought he was too. Deadshot, Bloodsport, they're both deadly aim, you know, shooters yeah. stuff like that. I thought it was just like a. Oh, you know, boom, boom, boom. But then I was like, oh, yeah, has, has the different. daughter who he'd always visited. Yeah, exactly, because it's it's it, it is basically Will Smith's character. It's a daughter kind of situation. Technically, the daughter's a little bit older now. She gets in trouble. You know, all this kind of stuff. Waller's being a bitch. You know, stuff like that. So yeah, it, it looks verbatim like he's just real Will Smith's character. And it's like, oh no, she just found another African American assassin who's deadly aim, who has a daughter, and okay. <laughs> you know, kind of thing, which I loved. I loved his explanation of why he was in jail. I thought that was that was a good like. I would have loved to have seen that in a movie, you know, because I've never seen Henry Cavill outside of like Doomsday get dominated like that. So you're telling me that Bloodsport put him in the ICU? I'm kind of would like kind of like, kind of like in uh in the first Suicide Squad, we got to see like flashbacks of them getting caught. I would have actually. Yeah, like when Batman made a brief appearance. Yeah. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen him shoot Henry Cavill and watch him go down, but. And forbid you have Henry Cavill in a DC movie anymore outside of the Snyder Cut. But I love Idris Elba in this movie. I thought he was great. Uh, obviously, he's he's basically playing himself <laughs> for the most part. But I, he was I a sh- say, straight man in this movie. But him as the straight man also is just – it's cool as shit. And it well, makes sense. fun stuff to do too. And, and I got to say, I, I was realizing um, that Idris Elba is kind of the franchise king. 
I mean, this is a dude who not only is in now DC Universe, uh, he's be- he's obviously part of Marvel, MCU. the MCU. Yeah. Well, he's, he's part dead of Fast now, yeah. He's part of Fast and Furious. He's part of Star Trek. He's part of Ghost Rider. He's part of Pacific Rim. Uh, and there's other p- kind of franchises like Finding Dory he's got a voice in. And then there's other stuff which really could have become franchises like, like The Losers. Technically, and- technically, he needs Star Wars and Jurassic Park, and I think he's – and, and a Lord of the Rings, and he's pretty really? much. I can totally see him showing up in any one of those. How did he not pop up in a Harry Potter? He's British. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one part too that made no sense to me when we were in the bar. And the yeah, black I'm right here, world. everybody. I'm like. You're not American, Idris. You're French. Well, that's just, yeah, they're, they're like, I'm like, I'm sorry, but like half the people on your team are Australian. One of them's like, I don't know, some sort of Mexican, Spanish, whatever. I don't know what, where she's yeah. from. Uh, and, then, and then you have him as British. Like, they're not really American. I guess they're sent there by the American government. So I guess that's. Yeah, so, I mean, technically you're, you're in America, but it's like, you're not, like, you're the one person that's talking that's like, you're not American. <laughs> like, you should have had like, like Rick go, okay. Kind of, it's, he was like, "All right, everybody." It's like, kind of thing, but I, I, I loved uh, Ian Shelba in the in this movie. I loved his initial like when they're all in the theater or like in the in the meeting room and like, you know, hey. it's like we're gonna fucking die. I God, I hope so. Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I just I loved it, and I and I like, but it's one of those things too where you said there was not a whole lot of heart in the film. There wasn't a lot of connection between um rat catcher 2 and, and Bloodsport, but we see that initially when king shark almost eats rat catcher 2 he could have just let her let him do it but she she fucking blew away king shark in a sense then he's about to eat another team member do you think do you think elba cares or Bloodsport yeah, cares or Dubois, whatever you want to call his name yeah like, but his but he didn't know what her powers were at the time except for and it's the one thing he doesn't care about. So her dying technically would have been a beneficial to him because he wouldn't have to deal with rats anymore. And that 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 little story plot point worked great the whole way through because that was like the one like story you wanted to work. Like that was the one relationship you wanted is you wanted Sebastian and Bloodsport <laughs> to become best friends. You wanted it. Like you wanted like every, like the first moment that you saw Blood that you saw Sebastian go. I'm not shaking that rat's hand. He's like, oh, he's offering you a pretty leaf. <laughs> I don't want a fucking leaf. <laughs> he just, like, he must see good in you. There's no good in me. It's like, poor Sebastian. Like, but then I also loved how, how they used that with, um, I think it was Waller said too, it was like, you didn't tell me you had a fear of rats. Like, why would I tell you? <laughs> it's like, why would I tell you that? <laughs> it's like, I love, and then like when he screamed, the first, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I loved it. I loved it. Uh, and his suit was so cool. I was like, he just would, and would just shoot. Like, he, his, his suit was like, I don't know, know how his suit works. The only thing I don't understand, what was the point of the end of a gun spinning? He shot multiple shots. Like, was it was like a spiral. It was, I wasn't, it was a no. spiral. Of, I, we didn't obviously get to see what it really could do because yeah. it didn't affect the person. Like, yeah, this was a complaint. I was just trying to figure out, like, what was the point of that? But, yeah. No, we, if, you, if they were going against regular people, maybe we would have saw what it would have done. Maybe if we read the comics, we probably knew what that would have done. Yeah, I think yeah, that was more like, a, oh, it's that gun kind of thing for comic book fans. But I've never heard of 90% of these characters, obviously, because they're like D and F class of villains. But Bloodsport seems like a really cool effing character. And we got to see that. And it's because James Gunn likes picking these kinds of characters. And Idris Elba, I think, does uh, a great job doing this i love his straight man i i also love how uh him and Ratcatcher's relationship was building throughout the film and how they they both kind of poked fun at killer at king shark when he's like mustache that's the worst fucking mustache i've ever seen (laughs) if that worked we would have killed a giant guy shark wearing a mustache fuck (laughs) i i just i love the interactions that they had um and we'll 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 go in obviously unless you have anything else for each yourself no that's about it for him all right king shark i obviously i mean this is this is the third iteration of king shark that we've seen on screen uh he was on the flash which i didn't think worked really well uh harley quinn's cartoon is obviously the best iteration uh rob funches does a phenomenal King Shark on that show. I Everything love about it. this show. If you guys have not watched yes. that show. If you guys have not watched the Harley Quinn cartoon series, it's on HBO Max. It is 
amazing. And Rob Funches as King Shark is my favorite part of that show. Uh, I love him as so when this one came out, I was like, he's not gonna be as good. Like he's just not. Like I hope he's decent. And he did not disappoint. Stallone as King Shark. I didn't know how it was gonna work. I didn't know if it was gonna work really well. But I think if it works, it works in a way. And, and I think it worked. I, I think I credit actually Harley Quinn cartoon for making it work because I think yeah. that had that not existed, which kind of created a template for King Shark, I think they said, you know, he works really well as a comedic character, which they tried to go serious. Flash, he's treated he as like, uh, Mr. Freeze kind of character. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I agree. Harley Quinn's cartoon series helped open the door for King Shark. And I, I loved his character. I mean, he had, and he had so much heart uh, and, and, and like sadness in him. He like, you know, he tried to eat rat catcher too. Cause nom nom, you know, and then he had that, you had the, yeah, hungry. And he had that one moment where he's, he's like, you don't eat your friend. I have no, I know friends. You, you know, know what I like, thought was going to happen? I just want to say a, a plot point I thought was going to happen that didn't. Is they talked about that you know, they were his friends, and then there's that one point where they're inside uh, Jotunheim, and and he like is doing something. He turns around, and everybody else is gone. I thought like he was going to be like my friends abandoned me, and he was going to like. Oh no! He was too distracted. To he was too distracted by the colorful like whatever the hell you want to call those things. Um, well, that was after he, after he got left there, he turned around and he wandered into the, the room by himself. Oh, uh, you're talking about when when uh, Peacemaker left them? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I saw I that too. Looked around, I looked like he was alone. I was like, oh shit, is he gonna like turn on him or something? But that didn't happen. No, but then he eventually found them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like friends. Like I like it, but that's a that's a great thing too. Is like even at that one part where they're running through the jungle with um the freedom fighters and, and polka dot man falls down and you know he's having his reaction thing again. He's like, carry friend kind of thing. It's like I say, see, he's he's learning, like he wants. He wants friendship. He wants to be a part of the group. Everyone just keeps treating him like he's, you know, he's slow and stupid. And he's like, he's trying. And then you get that one moment where he, you know, he he stumbles up into like the aquarium thing and he meets those. And he gets to play. He's playing with them. He's having fun. And I also, I, I don't know a lot of people maybe got this one, but there was the moment where he was upset because obviously he couldn't go into the club. But they're driving and he's looking out the window and he's just watching the world go by, which to me I thought was like kind of like, him looking out of an aquarium and kind of seeing like this is what it looks like when people look you know at a pool and then he got to get his own real aquarium thing and then it was so sad that those things attacked him i <laughs> did not see that coming i totally saw it coming because i was just like oh they're adorable they're gonna like we've seen that happen like galaxy quest i was gonna be like you know he they were gonna you know he was gonna con not control them but they were gonna like help him out i didn't expect them to attack him i was so afraid that they were gonna kill him because it got so bloody and i was like like, don't you dare kill King Shark. He's a treasure. You don't kill him. <laughs> my, my my son, uh, yes, is underage, but I love watching because whatever. Um, he was so worried. Every time you look at King Shark, was going to die, whether it be from, from those Getting things, shots. From gunshots, <laughs> or from the building collapsing on him. He was like, no, don't kill King Shark. Because King Shark is the heart of this freaking movie. But I, and when King Shark eats people... Like uh, one of the one of the funniest moments for me, and it was such a subtle moment. And my like, I was watching it the second time I watched it. I was watching it with my dad, and I'm dying. My dad's like, "What is so funny?" Is the first time he goes to eat that one guy when they when they made the Freedom Fighters is watching him in the background go, like he's hopping around in in the background as he's creeping up. And he's just watching him bopping his little shark head, and they just <laughs> and then eats him. But it was it's it's one of those moments too where he, when he's in front of a whole. Corto Maltese soldiers, and he just goes after that one dude, and he's just walking around. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that guy, yeah. Just chewing on the head, Still gnawing on it, yeah. having fun, like just gnawing on it like a bone. I was like, yeah, but yeah, that one guy we were. I mean, that was in the trailer, but it's I I loved how he just kept walking around with that head, like <laughs> no no, and then of course at the very very end, no no. Is that seriously what you think about right now? No. No, 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 I loved King Shark so much. I think Stallone did a great job with it. I mean, like I said, he doesn't say a whole lot of words, but he says enough to give King Shark a voice and give him a character of, of, of development in the film. I loved what they did with King Shark. And like I said, if they would have killed King Shark. And, and Stallone, another Guardians of the Galaxy alumni. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and he did he did exactly what Vin Diesel did with Groot. 
except that King Shark actually has dialogue where Groot says three things, is that you took a character that is a giant fucking tree and a shark who has relatively no dialogue, is compared to stupid because they say very little things, but they have some of the biggest heart in the film. Mm-hmm. And with, with Groot, he sacrificed himself to protect his, his family. You know, King Shark just wanted to be with his friends and would do everything he could to save his friends and just wanted to eat. He was just hungry. Leave the man alone or leave the sh- poor shark alone. Um, going into that, we'll, we'll go ahead and go into, uh, Polka Dot Man. Uh, I, I did, if there was one character that I was like, this is not going to work. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to find anything to like about this character. Like, there's just not anything that I'm going to think is good about this. It was Polka Dot Man. And the only thing I remember, I'm going to butcher his name, but it's David Dashmulshan. Dashmulshan? I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know. Only thing I know him from is he's the Joker's crony in Dark Knight. It was memorable because, like, I remember that scene because of his performance, and that I haven't really seen him in anything else. So when I saw him in this, I was like, okay, he's probably one of those characters that's probably gonna die. <laughs> like, oh yeah, well, they totally. I think when 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 they announced uh, Polka Dot Man was gonna be in the movie, and you know, and and I was like, okay, that's totally a character that James gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna put that character in the movie because it's gonna look it's, ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, yeah. But you totally assumed it was gonna be one of the throwaway characters, but then you saw, I saw, like I said, I saw the trailers, I'm like. He's in a lot of this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's and, and of course he's the one that looks like he's got a, a death wish because he's just like, God, I hope so. I hope we die. Yeah. And uh, I, I'll, I'll have more to say about because I talked a lot about King Shark, obviously, and this is my second favorite character. So go go ahead with your thoughts on, on Polka Dot Man. No, Polka Dot I Man. Remember, I can't remember what his real name was in the movie, but Polka Dot Man is what I'm going to call him. Yeah, but that's all you need to know about him. Uh, so Polka Dot Man, I, I I thought was an interesting character because like I like that actor. I actually have, I've recognized seeing him in a lot of movies, but he's like one of those guys who's never a main role. He's just like yeah, you know, background guy number three. And uh, so I I like that uh, he got to do a real role here. Um, and the character I thought it, it could have been. I, I actually originally thought it was going to be like an over the top like comedic character, but he wasn't. Like he said, he was like a death wish. He was like this depressed dude. Um, he got the whole mommy issues thing going on, which actually one of the things I love best about it was when they showed like his point of that, view. That whole that joke worked every fucking time. It's like the first time they show when he's looking at the group and he see yeah. and he say, where do you where do you see your mother? I guess I see her everywhere. Everywhere. You know, and and, uh, then, and then King Shark reaches for the butterfly as his mom. It's like that part I was like, okay, that was kind of funny. But then when they showed him in the club dancing. And like all of which was a little disturbing with him. Like his, ha- his happiest time. moment of the whole film. He's just like, yeah. I was just like, that was super disturbing. And then when they showed Starro as his mom, oh my God, that was hilarious. It worked. It was a joke that I thought was like, it was going to be funny one time and then be overdone. But it to me worked every damn time. Yeah, that, that worked. The only thing I didn't get about him is, um, you know, he talks about how basically his power is this alien virus or Infection. Interdimensional, interdimensional, virus. interdimensional uh, virus, or infection, and, which you know caused him to like produce these polka dots. If he does expel them twice a day, you know he'll die. But then, like when we first see him, that they're removing the power dampener from around his neck. Now it's actually a virus dampener because I think it's more like kind of like the metahuman things, where it, like it kind of like how like in X Men where you put that thing on, it, it makes them not power. It takes their mutant genes away. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a meta dampener where it takes that away. So technically, his life was probably way better with that thing. That's on. what I was gonna say. I wonder if he, maybe, I mean, because he's in jail, obviously. Well, he did I, look happy when they took it off of him. I would think, like, once he got out of prison, he'd like say, "Can I get some version of this? Then I won't have any powers, and then you guys won't have to worry about me doing anything bad because I'll just be a normal dude." So there, there's that whole thing. So of all the, I think people- that I think that's also why he has such issues at the start of the film. Mm-hmm. Or start of the mission is because he's gotten so used to not having to do it because he had the dampener on. That's why he keeps having the problems at the beginning, I yeah. think. But yeah, but, um, go ahead. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, his his death, which, like I said, I, I originally expected him to be a character that would die early until I saw the trailer. Like, okay, he's in a lot of this movie. And then I kind of assumed that he was one of the ones to make it all the way to the end. But then there's that moment where I, you and I both saw this. T- Telegraphed t- from a mile I away. Like, like, I'm a superhero. You're like, okay, he's probably not. And then the way they frame the picture, it's just you you know he's about to get killed. It's like in so many movies where someone's about to get hit by a car, and you know they are because the way you look, the way it's fr- framed, like that dude. Because they're pulling the, the screen out just far enough so you can see something come off screen. 
Yeah. And he's a little bit of a distance away from Elba, so you know Elba's safe no matter what. He was like, God damn it, he's going to get squashed. Sure enough. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But I also liked how they didn't just kind of blow off his death because at the very end you saw Ratcatcher 2 was mourning him, which was like, once again, the hearts. The, their deaths mattered. Rick Flagg's death mattered. Polka Dot Man's death mattered. None of the people in the beginning, except for, I guess, Boomerang for, for Harley, didn't matter. But it's... Polka Dot Man, like I said, everything that you said, I, I 100% agree. His powers, like, he throw, what does he do? Throw Polka Dots people? He does throw Polka Dots people. He does throw Polka Dots people. I was like, okay, that's weird. But then, like, the because like, the first time you see him, he, he's taking out, like a, like, a, like, a stationary thing. But when he uses it on people, you're like, holy shit. Why is he even using this more? <laughs> Because it was so fucking cool. Uh, but yeah, I loved, I loved, I loved the actor. I loved his performance where he was just kind of, he was so depressing and just tortured. And But when he, he has these little moments of where he's had some levity because he has friends now. And like I said, the dancing sequence, was, to me, is just funny when he's, he's really getting into the dance and it's all his moms. And, <laughs> and like, uh, I just, just because like, he, he, he seems like that character that's like, he's never had friends before. Kind of like King Shark, and he's finally just interacting with these people, and they're appreciating him once they kind of figured out what the whole polka dot thing was. But it's it's just like I said, the the line where they take out the Freedom Fighters, and he's like, "I pictured they were all my mother, and I killed them." <laughs> Such a great line. But um, even the even the the Milton death, like I loved his reaction to that. And Harley was was perfect. Like, who's Milton? I think I would have remembered a Milton. I don't know Milton. There was a Milton. He's been here the whole time. He's like, oh, Milton. Milton. Oh, <laughs> Milton. I, I, I love, love, you know, that was a perfect example of how you took, you know, one person's death and had, like you said, like two completely different reactions, but both of them totally worked. It totally yeah, and they were both her, really, because yeah. Harley hasn't been a part of the group, so she doesn't really know who Milton is. And then even years I was like, Milton was with us? I thought he was on the bus. It's like, he was with us the whole time. I liked him. Where did this Milton love come from? I always liked him. I just never said anything about it. And it's just like, it, I felt bad for him because, like, once again, he treated, he thought them as all, like, close friends. Even Milton. So when when they he died, it was like losing a friend to to Polka Dot Man. I hate that I have to call him that. And it, like I said, it was such a very well done performance. And like I said, he got his full growth as a character when he attacked his mother. And he, you're like, I'm a superhero. You know, it's it's almost it was like it only went when it went downhill. So it was a good death for him because he went out at his highest. Like he was, he looked away. He was, he was looking at bloodshot. He didn't see the death coming, and he was at his most happiness, right there, which was a beautiful end character moment for him. I wish we could have gotten more because I loved the character. Abner Krill is the name, by the way. I, I remember. I, I could have sworn I remembered uh, Wallace say Krill when he ran with the group, but um, but yeah, I I loved his character. I was sad that his character died, but obviously we saw it coming from a mile away. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope he gets, I hope this helps him get elevated even more. Um, or he's just going to be one of those character actors where it's like, he's never going to be a leading man. He's always going to be, I don't think he's ever going to be a leading man, but I think he'll get bigger roles now. But yeah. I, I loved his powers. And like you said, I wish we would have saw more of his powers, um, used because of it. But I really, really enjoy what we got with him overall. Uh, Ratcatcher 2, Obviously, I think without Sebastian, I don't think her character would have worked nearly as well. I think having Sebastian um, with her elevated her character. Also, having her father be fucking Taika Waititi also elevated her character more. Because if there was one character outside of Polka Dot Man that I was like, eh, on. It's like, oh, it's Rat King from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it's a female. You know, I was like, okay, cool. But then you added Sebastian, which... I mean, was adorable throughout the film, especially with Bloodsport. Um, her character is, is you know, the way she treated King Shark. She she allowed King Shark to be friendly. She allowed, she, she allowed him to be a part of their group because no one else was really letting King Shark in. And because of that, you know, like she, you know, like her moment when she saw that he lived and she ran up and hugged him and how she like, 
slept on his arm at the end of the movie. Like all little beautiful moments that her her introduction, she was the heart of the of the group. Her her connection to all of them, Peacemaker. Even, that's why it was so heartbreaking when when he turns on her. Um, her connection to Bloodsport. The only one she didn't have a connection to was Harley, because obviously Harley gets separate, not is not with the group till the very end. But she had moments with every single character, and then the the one moment where obviously she she sends all the rats, which I felt so sorry for Bloodsport at the moment because they're all crawling on him and he's just hiding, cowering, which is such a non badass moment, but totally works for this movie. But to to play that scene with her and Tyke or little version of her and Taika. Uh, and then her, cause that's obviously what's rolling past her head at that moment. And her selling it with tears, I thought was an incredibly well done scene. It, it's right up there with the, the uh, Peter Quill trying to see his mom when he is holding on to the soul stone kind of thing. I thought worked really, really well. Um, I really liked her character. She was the one character that I was ultimately surprised about liking because I didn't think her, I was going to like her character. She wasn't like polka dot man. Where I was like, Oh, she's going to die right away. I knew she was going to live through most of the film, but I wasn't expecting to like her character as much as I did. I, I kind of agree with that because I mean, she's a character who I thought was just like, you know, I don't care about character control rats, whatever. Um, and in the beginning, you know, she was kind of being used to take like some digs at millennials, things like that and how they're lazy and yeah. sleeping. Yeah. And all this kind of thing, which I, I actually thought that was hilarious by the way. Um, so, and then didn't John Zeta call? Oh, he called someone else like what was it like hippies or hip hip some some words. He uses weird words, but it was great. But uh, but so I thought you know she she'd be a fine character. Although honestly, from like the trailers and that, I I swore I thought that her and uh, Pete Davidson's character were going to be like brother and sister because they just had very similar faces and the sunken eyes kind of look. But I but obviously that wasn't the case. Um, but I ended up actually like you said really enjoying her character a lot of it because of kind of she had those kind of emotional moments both like with King Shark and kind of welcoming him. And then in, in the end where she was kind of the one who was there with John, when Peacemaker makes his turn, which is like, take the drive. Why do you have to kill me? You know, I thought that was an excellent scene that she did there as well. Oh yeah. Um, anything else with her you wanted to mention? Um, no, ex nothing except for the fact that I, I'm amazed that this is essentially her first movie role, at least her first American oh, movie role. And yeah, I mean, I looked her up and she has like two other movies, but as far as I could tell, they were like, foreign films and I've never heard of them or anyone else involved with them. So this is basically like her first big role. And I think she's going to have a career ahead of her. No, no love for little Sebastian. Oh, little Sebastian was fun. He, 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 was, <laughs> he played his role perfectly. He was just kind of a little, you know, cute animal comic relief. Uh, I, I did especially like the, uh, the scene at the end, uh, when, um, uh, blood sport finally kind of forces himself to pet him. First of all, he does a little dog thing where he goes, Yeah, three yeah. Times and then lays down. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I mean, he's basically the best rat since uh, I, lo I love that he called him Ratatouille at one point. It's like Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, before we get anyway, to our the what's that? No, anyway, stay off the comms. Yes, <laughs> before, we, before we get to Harley, uh, the villains, if there's a weak spot. It's probably the villains, but they're not the most important part of the story. They're really not. Yeah, well, uh, the villains. The villains. I don't, think, I, mean, I don't think we cared about the generals. I don't think they yeah, really. The generals were just a plot device to get the, the have somebody had this star project, starfish product, starfish. You know, underground there, and they were doing their thing. I, I think the humans, the uh, villains, were incidental. Yeah, and th thus leading into uh, the thinker. Peter Capaldi, which obviously I love Peter Capaldi from Doctor Who. He's basically playing the doctor in this movie, except he's not immortal and he doesn't have a time machine. But the thing, the thing that if there is a negative to this character is that did we ever really see anything that really makes him special in this film outside of obviously the things they said it was like there was never anything he did in the movie that made like I assume oh. he was supposed to be super intelligent or something, but well, I we don't, don't I never really see it. it. Except for having apparently been heading up this project, we don't know anything special about him. And I mean, yeah. Peter Capaldi was fun. I mean, he had some good moments, but I, I didn't. I'm kind of glad he died. I'm like, okay, he's. Well, oh, no, he needed, he needed to die. Yeah, he and he had a great he had a great death as, as well. And I, I and I I pointed this out to you in, in, before we started the video. I, I love the one moment where we got to see boobs. <laughs> And like, oh, so you don't want to see the dick, but you want to see the boobs. Okay, it's the only boob shot in the movie. It's an unnecessary boob shot, but I also love that. Like when the boob show up, you see like Capaldi turn around at a polka dot man going, "See that?" <laughs> it's just it's a little thing, but I liked it. I, I liked it just because it was just like a like a nice little tip of the hat. 
Uh, but yeah, his character was had some funny moments, had some great moments. It's just that his character kind of was just like exposition in a way, which you kind of had to have it there. There's a lot of that in this movie. Actually, Amanda Waller had most of it. But there's well, a whole lot of parts where like, yeah. you had to introduce every character and then they explain how everything worked. And it's like, okay, yeah. we get, I get it's necessary, but yeah. Yeah. And I think I think his his whole character was literally just to kind of get us into Starro or Starro the Conqueror. And yeah. I'm, I'm I'm gonna tell you this right now. The first time I saw the trailer and I saw Starro, I was like, okay, this isn't gonna work. Like this is stupid. Like this is not ever. This is not gonna work at all. And somehow it it, got, it did. It totally worked. I I I I, I liked the. Uh, I, I guess the little starfishes and how they basically became body uh, hosts kind of deal. Um, and even the sadness of Starro's death. Once again, the American government is, is the villain of the story. Like, like, like Starro, he was just minding his own I business. Was happy floating in space. Yeah. Like he was minding his own business. And then the American astronauts took him. And then the American government wanted to weaponize him. And all this, and then you know, the American government is the villain to this entire story. But so it's like it's one of those things. Where it's like he's not really the villain. He's just getting revenge. I mean, he's attacking innocent people. But it's one of those things. Where he's being being tortured for thirty years by by the thinker, and he busts out and he has some rage to get rid of. And it's it, it's you know, I'm like obviously he had to die, but it's like that one line was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Like, like it's it, it, it you know it's kind of like when you kill Godzilla. If Godzilla was like gonna die, it's just like I was just going out for a walk and y'all started attacking me. <laughs> so it was like I just did what I had to do. You know, it's it's one of those things. But like it, I didn't think it was gonna work. It worked. Obviously, I think they telegraphed what Harley was gonna do from the get go because it's like she's clearly gonna stab him in the eye. <laughs> I think that's the only way it's gonna work. But when she did that, oh, I did like that she opened it up and that opened it up for all the rats yeah, to come in. Yeah, I was like, I, 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 when she went in, I was like, oh, no. I wasn't expecting this like psychedelic kind of thing. And then all the rats going in and like Sebastian floats in. I was like, okay. And then like even outside, you're seeing like the water, the blood like whoosh around in his eyes. I was like, I was like, okay, that's awesome visuals. Like that's great. Like I loved that whole aspect of it. Was there anything else you wanted to add with Starro? No. No. It's just very um, James Gunn. I, I, <laughs> yeah, it's a very yeah, it's a total James Gunn thing, especially with them all basically being like body hosts. That's a total yeah. James Gunn thing because like Slither and everything. All right, so that uh, I think that only leaves Harley. Am I leaving anyone else out? Did we, did we get a whole? Did we get through everyone? Is Harley the only one left? I I believe so. That's the only person I have any notes left on. So yeah. Yeah, that's the only one I I actually didn't have any notes on her surprisingly, but Harley was I think the only person. Well, that was there's not a lot to say on. about Harley beyond the fact that okay, because she's had a whole another movie. Well, she's had two. She did two movies. She's had yeah. two movies to grow. And this one is just kind of continuing the same arc. Now, now the thing is obviously she's you know changed her characters, changed has kind of grown. Um, I know she's changed the the tattoo instead of property of Joker. Now it's the property of Noah, and they made sure the to back of her jacket says what was it like. Live fast, Live fast die, die, die clown, clown. Or, clown or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so obviously she's like become more powerful. You know, she's not, you know, just Joker's psychic anymore. But again, that was kind of all kind of covered in birds. In birds yeah. So yeah. this is kind of, she didn't have a whole lot uh, of an arc to her character this round. I honestly think that the, the section with her and the... The like, subplot, the, the sub the new, the new president or whatever you call him. The, yeah. Or the first general. Who general, took general Luna was his name. I thought that was mostly pointless. I think that they kind of threw that in there to have her say, like, oh, look, you know, I decided that I'm not going to be, you know, just, you know, property of some man. I'm going to be, you know, and it's, and I'm going to watch for red flags. And it's like, we kind of already got that from last week. So that was unnecessary. This movie was a little bit long, being two hours and 12 minutes, but it, I didn't, it didn't hurt the movie for me. It's just, it, that was the one scene where I looked at and kind of like, okay. Yeah, I even I even said that in my review is like it's I think it was like two hours, nine minutes, two hours, twelve minutes. There's about ten minutes that could have been cut, and it was that whole scene, that whole side quest with Harley and and Luna. Um, it was really there for to give Harley some screen time because frankly, like we love Margot Robbie as Harley, but her character is inconsequential to the film except for in the final act when she like they didn't have to have her go through the whole like love story and like. The, the montage with the birds and and then eventually killing him. like she should have just gotten captured and been in the hole and, well, and that, stuff like that like didn't have to do all that like i get it the whole like killing luna and her monologue you talk about it's character growth because it's hardly learning 
to realize that stuff. But once, like you said, we did that in Birds of Prey. We had a whole movie dedicated to that. Now, if anything, this is just solidifying that she didn't backtrack from Birds of Prey, that she's still she, – she's noticing those things and she's growing as a character and, and understanding those things. And even with her friendship with Rick Flagg and how she's – She's mourning like a normal human being when Rick died and, and stuff like that. And it, it, it's showing character growth for Harley, which is great. And, you know, and it gives Margot Robbie something a little more to chew on. But in a movie like this, it feels tacked on. It feels extra. It's not, it doesn't hurt the movie in any way. But it's kind of like when you and I were reviewing In the Heights. And it was like if there was one scene we would remove, it would have probably been the – um, well, that everybody else seems to love. But yeah, yeah exactly. It would probably be the Consuela song because it just kind of took you out of the film. And that's kind of what the Harley scene does. It's 10 minutes. I actually timed it. So I was like, how much is of this actually is in the film? And that 10 minutes just takes you out of the movie. You could have still had the whole like her being tortured and jailbreak scene and all that. Yeah, she, she could have been captured her, and, then they could, and she could have broken out and then they yeah. show up to try and rescue her. That still works, but the whole thing with the the him you trying to that whole answer or thing. it was completely inconsequential to the plot. Yeah, and it doesn't now, come now I don't, back or anything like that. Yeah, no, I I wouldn't go as far as say like you did a little bit earlier, but she's completely inconsequential to the movie. Because I think that no, 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 no. I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying that scene's inconsequential. Yeah. I'm saying that Harley, you could have given her a little bit more like scenes here of her like in yeah. in like in the jail or being tortured or whatever, but you didn't have to do like a whole love story mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, that felt that, I that, that felt character. Cool. I loved all her lines. I think that she's she, she's a yeah. hilarious character. Um, and the thing about that, that where she was breaking out, there's that whole action scene with it, her breaking out and like fighting off, you know, 20 guys along the way or whatever it is. And my thing about that scene is that it's another one of those scenes where she should have been shot like 12 different times, kind of like the uh, the prison break scene in Birds of Prey, in Birds of Prey. <laughs> but in Birds of Prey, everybody totally criticized it. They're like, why aren't these people shooting her? She would have died so many times. She would no way she would have made it. In this one, people are like, oh, this is a great scene where Harley gets to kick ass. I'm like, it's the same thing she did there. And it, again, I can overlook the fact that, you know, while she's beaten up or shooting five guards over here, the other two would, you know, shot her. I just walked up to her with a knife, you know. But I'm like, okay, you got to make a cool action scene. I'm just like, people. I mean, you could, yeah, I mean, you can make that argument like in John Wick. Yeah. You, know, like, you know, he's shooting 50 people. Well, why are those other people just standing around waiting to get shot? But it's I mean, like a it, lot of those Asian, uh, whether Indonesian or Hong Kong or whatever, uh, action films where like, you know, there's 20 guys, but only one of them fights him at a time. Well, the other one's standing in the background just doing this. Yeah. You're one that's like, well, guys, if he's beating all of you, just swarm just him all at once. You'll win. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not like, it's not like the comedies where they just, you know, crawl from under the bottom of the group, like, you know, kind of thing. But I mean, even but that jailbreak scene was great. I don't think Carly's got the upper body strength to lift that dude up like she did, you know. But it still looked cool. Yeah. It looked cool. And then her the javelin scenes. I think she did great. There was great work there with the javelin, uh, which obviously you know I love three hundred. So obviously the javelin scene just reminded me of three hundred. So I was like, I miss good javelin scenes. Um, I don't know if I really love the flower explosion and the cartoon birds. At that point, I think it was just Harley kind of just going. That that's like what Harley like was. Harley doing. Vision, yeah. I, which, which, my but it just felt out is, of with the rest of the film. If they had used that more often, then yeah. I would totally get it. But it was like it was only used in the one place. So it was like, why are we suddenly using Harley Vision? You know, it's I don't know. I mean, you you can count Harley Vision maybe during the montage song with Luna technically, but that was more about their day together. I don't think it was more of a montage of like in her brain kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like if they had done that through during that point, like, okay, they did it through there. They did it through here. That's just Harley's crazy way of how she's dealing with all of this kind of but thing. It's like if, if Polka Dot Man had never explained his mommy issues, if just one scene, suddenly you saw him seeing everyone as his mom, you'd be like, what oh, the hell is this? One scene like that. Exactly. But because he said that, Anytime his mother showed up, up, it made sense. Yeah, because it was set up through the rest of it. Whereas, you know, like maybe her being electrocuted so many times, maybe it it knocked something loose and she was seeing things like that through the rest of the film. Then it would have flowed. It would have made more sense. Whereas, like, you had this, like, exploding fire flower bombs going on behind her. And then, like, when she was shooting the people, flowers are shooting out of them. It looked cool. Yeah, no, visually, visually it looks fantastic. But then, like, once she leaves that place, like, it never happens again. 
then you know unless you want to count what's inside Starro's eye but I think that's just that's his veins you know his eye veins and shit mm. but I mean yeah Robbie does great but we, we expect her to be great like we, we I don't think we were expecting her not to do well as Harley this is her third film if she hasn't gotten it by now she she ain't gonna get it but she had it in Birds of Prey you know it's like like you said she's got great lines um you know the, the well, I again, think we're gonna see one more Harley Quinn we I think we're going to finally think, see a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy well she I would love that but we got that in the cartoon and I'm okay with the cartoon version of that I I agree, think but I, she, I think said, she said she doesn't know if she's gonna do it again because she feels like Every time she does one of these, she gets very criticized or the movies don't never do well. So she doesn't know if she wants to do it again. Kind of like Ben Affleck with Batman. He's like, well, I'm not going to do these if you guys are just going to rip me a new one every time I do it. I think Robbie's getting to that point where she's like, why am I putting all this effort in if you guys just hate it every time? Although Which I do think I this, one, I think this, this one is going to get critically acclaimed. I think it's oh, already yeah. audience acclaim. I do not think it's going to make a ton of money. But the problem is, the problem is that – it's going to still backfire is that like what we just did everyone's main issue is those 10 minutes of harley it's not needed in the film uh like i i've I, you know during my break at work today i was watching reviews of other people's kind of seeing where everyone was talking about and everyone was kind of in the same boat it's like we love harley but yeah that scene was pointless that scene was not needed and and all this and it, it just it, it stops the film and it, it kind of it's just you know changes the whole pace up and i'm just like it's that thing right there that may keep her from coming back and doing another. Because once again, it's it's the Harley scene that that change that messes with the flow of the film, and it's like that is where we might we might lose her as Harley. Uh, which at that point, there's no point of another Suicide Squad. You're not gonna you're not gonna continue the Suicide Squad without Harley. She's the staple point. I I don't think we'll get another Suicide Squad. I think we'll get Harley Quinn in one more movie though. You don't think they're going to talk James Gunn into making another one, or you think that Dis since Disney brought him back, they're not going to be able to get him back? No, well, no, because because James Gunn has even said actually, and the the guy whoever it is uh, who's heading up DC has said, you know, James Gunn has always said, you know, he's welcome back for more projects, and they actually have been talking about some stuff already. I just do not think they'll make another Suicide Squad movie. I I almost think that I mean, I also don't want to ever say never. But I, I think that part of the I think that one of the biggest hindrances to it is that the fact that it's free on HBO Max is going to hurt its box office, and I think that they're going to be like, oh, I mean, well, it's great money. Double Cruise did ninety mil, and it was on Double Cruise. Everyone had to pay an additional thirty million dollars, or thirty dollars to watch it. This is free for anybody who has HBO Max or who has someone's but, HBO Max password. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, like Netflix, but I mean, it's um, oh, I had a thought, and I, no, I, it, I think if James Gunn was going to direct another one, I would love for him to take Green Lantern on. I like Green Lantern Core. I would love to see him do. Well, that's going to be a series on HBO Max. I think he's. Isn't I'm not he, saying right or wrong. I'm just telling you that. No, 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 no. I'm that's saying, isn't he? Is he's he's doing the Peacemaker series though. Yeah, Peacemaker series comes out in January. Which what? Well, go ahead and talk about the end credits sequence. <laughs> like well, we kind of did. All right, we kind of did. Yeah, yeah well, well, the series, obviously, obviously, the end credits sequence. Like you said, we weren't sure if it was going to be a prequel or what. But then the end credits kind of clears that up that he's still alive. Yeah, and and I, I, think, I think James Gunn is it, helping with that, right? Isn't yeah. he the Peacemaker series? Because because yeah, that's the thing. That the whole he, thing. he might have even directed the whole thing. I'm not sure. He, they even said he wasn't going to do it. Like there wasn't going to be a series. But then mm -hmm. shooting this movie with Cena and seeing how Cena was doing Peacemaker, he's like, we got to continue this character. We got to yeah. do more. And so that's why he's like, we're going to do a TV series with this guy. And I think they also, with that post credit sequence, were basically kind of saying that uh, these two characters, the blonde and Steven Ag, I don't know their character names. Uh, I think they're going to be like his handlers in the. Yeah, because they're not going to get Viola Davis back for yeah, this. He says about, uh, that, that she got back at us by you know saddling us with this guy. Exactly. So I, think, I think I was kind of hinting that they're going to be his handlers in the series. Which so. totally, totally fine with that. I'm excited yeah. for that when that comes out. Um, I also loved uh, the way James Gunn kind of did the structure of the story. Like he did it almost kind of like in time. like chapters and comic books kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like you had like you know like. Uh, now and uh you know i like, get like uh dirty little secrets and operation 
you know, oh, you're in time. Operation. I love that first event, and then he goes, wait, oh, wait, there's one more thing we have to do first, and disappears. Oh. He goes, Harley, Operation Harley. Like, because he made it feel like a comic book. Yes. In the situation. And then each time there was like a, and like even when he did Yodenheim, where he had like the, the roof structure, you know, plays the whole way through. Like I, that's once again, that's, that's one of those things that, that James Gunn just does so precisely, just beautifully. And that, that's one of the things that makes this movie so great on top of everything that we already talked about is that the way he shot this film makes it feel like a comic book. It makes it feel like the images of a comic book are just coming to life. Uh, it doesn't just feel like a run-of-the-mill normal superhero film, you know, like an Iron Man or a Captain America or something like that, where it's like, it's a movie with comic book characters in it. This felt like a comic book. Uh, in in the best way possible, and I love the way he structured it, the the dialogue, uh, the way he made the characters grow, and like I said, I I think even by the end, is I think you're kind of leaning more towards there. There was there was a lot more heart in this than you than you probably didn't see in the beginning of this. Have I not swayed you on that just a little bit? Not on the heart so much, no. You cold heartless bastard. But <laughs> but um, the yeah, is there uh. Was there, okay, there was one. There was one little mess up, and I still it, it irks me. It irks me both times I saw it, because when you saw the trailers, when Harley is about to get rescued, and she's like, "You were gonna rescue me," and she had the black blood because they didn't want to show blood in the trailer. She still has the black blood in the movie, but she's got blood on her chest here. But it's 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 bloody. It's bloody here when she's fighting everybody. But then when she goes outside, it's black. I'm like. They didn't fix, they didn't touch that up in the end. You know, I noticed it was black, but I guess I didn't think about you know if it was something touched up or if it's just supposed to be dried blood. I don't know. Yeah, but dried blood isn't black. It's, I don't know. it's maroon. It was her <laughs> nose makeup ran. I don't know. But, that, but but it's one of those things where it's like literally like two minutes later, like two minutes earlier, it's it's you know red blood. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, and I was like, oh, I was like, yeah. If I, at that point we're nitpicking, we really are. We're nitpicking at that point, but. Uh, nonetheless, if you were to, I think, I, is there anything else you want to touch on, or did, did we cover? No, I think we covered everything I had. All right, cool. If you were going to give, I, obviously, on my review, I gave my score for su- the Suicide Squad. I gave it a ninety-three percent. It was actually an eighty-eight percent, and then during my review, it bumped up to ninety-three, uh, which is my number two movie of the year so far. Uh, what would you have given the score for su- the Suicide Squad? Um, you know, I think I, on my letterbox, I gave it four stars out of five. Um, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like I almost wish there was more levels because it's more like a 4.25 for me it's better than a four but not quite a four and a half but it's it's definitely up there it's like an a minus for me so an 85 percent is it because that's an a minus for me so that's technically an 85 for brian then i'm gonna i'm gonna give him that said a minus um but yeah it's i i it's one of those movies where it's like yes for you you said you know the expectations were too high but you still enjoyed it quite a bit i exceeded it exceeded my expectations because I was one of those where it's like, I know it was going to be weird. I knew I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I trusted James Gunn and I also didn't know how they were going to handle King shark because obviously I love King shark from the cartoon series mm-hmm. and I was just worried about it. So I kind of went in a little more hesitant. I was super excited to watch it, but I was more hesitant that my expectations were kind of in the middle. So for me, it, it exceeded my expectations but with yours your expectations were already set too high that it just didn't match it you know honestly this movie kind of it came in actually exactly where i expected it to originally when i heard the suicide squad when i heard james gunn was doing it when i saw those first trailers i think this came in exactly where i expected it to be it was only in the the few days or maybe two weeks leading up to the movie where people like oh my gosh this is amazing that's the only thing that pushed it to the point where it didn't quite reach that level gotcha but you enjoyed it nonetheless. Oh, I love yeah, it. You would be talking about this right now if, if you didn't enjoy it. Oh, yeah. I've, I've talked about it for an hour and a half here. I watched it, you know, first showing last night in IMAX, and then I watched it again today on HBO Max already. So. Exactly. And part of me almost wants to go watch it again once we're done shooting this. Um, <laughs> but, yes, uh, we hope you guys stuck with us this entire time. If you did, awesome. If you didn't, I hope you jumped around and at least listened to some good stuff about it. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the spoiler review of the Suicide Squad. If you did, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on the movie Crusaders. Of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Uh, coming up next, we've got uh, Free Guy. Um, I don't know if we'll do a spoiler review of that. I guess it depends on how much Brian likes it because I don't think Brian's as excited for it as I oh, am. Yeah, okay. 
Brian doesn't like doing spoiler reviews, everybody. It, it, it's like pulling teeth, get Brian. Usually. Yeah, it depends on the film. Um, we might we might have a review for Don't Breathe 2. I haven't decided if I'm going to rush out to see it or not. I guess it kind of depends on word of mouth because I think the first movie was kind of perfect in its own little bubble and doing the sequel, I really don't know what the hell to expect. I, I think it's an unnecessary sequel, really, uh, or prequel. We still don't really know what the hell that is. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, but we definitely will have a review for Free Guy. We may have a review for Don't Breathe 2, but... Brian Michaels and myself will definitely be back here next Friday for another episode of the Weekend Crusaders where we talk about five movies that came out during that week in movie history. Uh, we just had uh, an episode drop yesterday, and we had a Lost episode also released uh, yesterday, uh, basically from the end of June. So check out both those uh, videos, and we'll be back next week with five more movies. Uh, until next time, my name is Sean Wasserkrug. That is Brian Michaels. We are the Movie Crusaders. And until next time, in case we don't see you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie crusaders. You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>